Yeah. Well, I just I just want to say uh, my condolences to you personally. Oh, thank you. To you for the passing of your brother James. Yeah. What happened? He was having he was having some health issues. Mm -hmm. The last time him and I performed together was 2011. Um, out here in California, Quincy did this thing called 60 Years of Quincy Jones. Yeah. That's in 1982 when they did that dude tour. I actually did that tour with him singing background. Oh, really? So, yeah, it was a lot of us that actually got together and oh, did man. the um, some of the same ones, you know, that did that. So anyway, we, Hollywood Bowl was a great show. And that was the last time we worked together. But then, you know, James and I would keep in touch and stuff. And then um, it's about 2015. I'm like, like, okay. I can see some memory loss when I'm talking to him. I'm like, you know, let's say, because I also work with Sheena Easton, and uh -huh. I'm like, hey, man, I just got back from blah, blah, blah. As he said, yeah, I just got back. And he go, Debbie, uh, what we just come back from? I was like, ooh. So I knew something was wrong. So I called my oldest sister, my sister Joyce. I said, have you noticed some memory loss for James? And she was like, yeah. I said, oh, okay. Because my mom had Alzheimer's. And so he was the oh. first one. And then, um, Honestly, by 2017, we couldn't even hold a conversation any longer. So he had early onset Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. He had stopped performing in 2015. So then after that, so, I mean, we knew, you know, him and I uh, actually lost another brother one month before James, mm -hmm. the one that was uh, next to me, mm -hmm. and then my brother James uh, in 2019. So oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Well, thank you. But they, they both had health issues. Yeah. And so it's four of us left. And so... Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if I'm the youngest, then the oldest one is in the 70s. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I just, um, let's kind of go back a little bit. Uh, you sung a little bit with Tower of Power. Is that correct? Uh, no, I actually never worked with him. No, um, not with Tower of Power. No, I love Tower of Power. Uh, but uh, it's interesting that you bring them up, though, because um, when I left, there was a point where I left Switch. And, you know, I was doing... I was doing so much stuff, working on a bunch of films and doing mm -hmm. a bunch of guest vocals and things mm -hmm. and commercials and radio station IDs. And so, uh, and I was just kind of done with groups. And, okay. um, but I got asked to become the lead singer of Tower Power. And I, I called them. I mean, when they called me, I said, if this had been, you know, another time in my life. Yeah. But I was, I was just, I was done with groups. So when we switched, got back together, you know, I told Greg, I said, as long as it's all, you know, because you, um, you may have seen the unsung episode of Switch and then some of the, the issues that happened with, you know, Bobby and them. And so uh, Bobby DeBarge and them. And I was just kind of like, OK, so now, you know, we just we're um, four originals. We're back together and doing stuff and, you know, performing and just having fun. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. all those other issues. You know what I mean? <laughs> so but no, I never I never worked. But I love Tower Power. Oh, OK. OK. Um. So speaking of unsung, were you happy with uh, with the feature they did with Switch? Yeah, you know, like it, uh, like anything, um, they they're gonna always leave out certain things. Because I mean, just my interview alone, I, I mean, I did probably a few hours of a shoot, and then when they, I even got called back and did some more. So really? and you, yeah, when you're talking about it, what 45, 50 minute show. Mm -hmm. So. I knew certain things were going to be um, cut out. And so, uh, but yeah, I mean, since it was us telling our own story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was, I mean, you know, the commentator is going to make some comments. That's, that's okay. But uh, since we were telling our own story, yeah, we were happy with, you know, because it was us saying what we had to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so what and was one thing, go ahead. What were some of the things uh, they left out that you may have wanted them to uh, feature? Well, see, I knew because, uh, you know, Bobby's, um, you know, his life and everything, since Bobby mm -hmm. and I were the main lead singers, even though all of us sang, you know, doing yeah. four-part harmony and everything, um, it was a couple of times, because they, you know, they said, if we ever ask you a question that, you know, you don't want to answer, just let us know. And I'm like, I'm fine, because if I don't want to answer it, you know, <laughs> you, you ain't got to worry. Yeah. So, but it was a couple of times where they were asking me something about Bobby. Um, okay. And I'm like, and Bob, you know, Bobby was a phenomenal talent. I mean, I loved working with him, but yeah. you know, he had these other issues that made it a challenge. And so um, they asked one way and I said, I said, you guys already did a, uh, how did I say it? 
I said, you guys already did an episode on DeBarge. So I said, you know, the family dynamics, it hasn't changed. That's how I answered it. And then I was asked again, almost a similar way. And then I brought that up again. Okay. The third time they brought it up, trying to say something about Bobby. I said, I said, Bobby is no different than like an Elvis Presley, a, a David Ruffin. I mean, some great talent that had some drug issues and had some other issues that he was dealing with. So I, I kind of minimized it because, you know I mean, I didn't want them to just focus on. But what we were not happy with, which we had nothing to do with, is when they did that Bobby DeBarge story, which was a joke. Ah. None of us was consulted on that at all. We didn't even know. I mean, Greg knew, but I had no idea it was even happening. I'm like, this is really? Like, yeah, this, this is really bad. Wow. So that, that was, yeah. But as far as the unsung episode, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was them asking us, you know, our history, and we told it like it was. Yeah, so, well, well, since I have one, um, we want to clarify a few things. Like, um, okay, like where, where did they get their name? Switch. Switch? Oh, yeah. And, and that was that was accurate. We talked about that in the, okay. uh, in the episode. What happened was <clears throat> when Jermaine, like I said, he's the one that got us, um, got the interest in Motown. At the time, Jermaine Jackson was married to Hazel Gordy, which was Barry Gordy's daughter. Mm -hmm. And so when we came out, he actually heard us and he was like, he was just blown away. He was like, man, you guys are better than the tape that, you know, that we had. Yeah. And so uh, he came back and we were rehearsing at this place called Studio Instrument Rentals. They call it SIR out here. And by the third or fourth day, he said, you guys got the deal. And we're like, are you kidding me? He like, no, you got the deal. He yeah. was, they were blown away. But we still had to do our showcase. So when we did our showcase, you know, it was like Barry Gordy was there, Suzanne DePass. You know I mean, some of these legends and some songwriters and stuff, you know, we we're going to be the newest thing at Motown. Yeah. Um, we actually all play multiple instruments. So here's, let's say I was out front singing a song. Mm -hmm. Bobby DeBarge would be on the uh, on the keyboards. And then if when Bobby went out to sing a song, I was on the keyboards and Greg and Greg and Eddie would be on the horns. Eddie plays trombone and trumpet and Greg plays trumpet. I mean, mm -hmm. and then if Bobby and I went out to do a duet like we yeah. we performed. I want to be with you at our uh, showcase. Mm -hmm. And then Greg and we get on the keyboards and then we did the song that's on our first album called Somebody's Watching You that Jody sang. Bobby got on the drums. Long story short, we were just doing what we normally do. Uh -huh. We had a meeting with Motown. I mean, they were blown away. And Suzanne DePaz says, I've never seen so much switching in my life. <laughs> uh, and we were like, you know, being silly. Let's call it band switch. And, you know, just as a joke. But then um, uh -huh. when they got to think about it, I said, that makes sense. Yeah. Is that your quote to say that? What? Let's call the band switch. Yeah, because, you know, I'm, I was one of the jokesters. I'm like, said I was 18 years old being silly. Yeah, uh, but it stuck. Oh, yeah. Well, when they <laughs> talked about it, they said it makes sense because that's who you are. You guys can play multiple instruments. You guys can, you sound like a singing group. It was like, yeah. it was so unique. And um, even to this day, we've known, you know, certain band members where one, one or two people might play multiple, like Prince, you know, he was a solo artist, but he played Very guitar, cool. keyboards, you know, sang. Mm -hmm lead back all of that and um it was unique to have more than one person in a band that did that that's why Suzanne that, DePass said that that's that's multi-talent talent there so how many instruments do you play well I started started on the drums when I was, was when I was little okay. and because we had a piano in the house um yeah. my oldest brother was phenomenal we were like his ear was just like he'd hear someone on the radio and come home and play it and then um James was playing the guitar and they started picking up the piano. So I started picking up the piano. And then I was 16 years old, signed Family Stone. They were out. And, um, you know, Larry with all that thumping, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, let me be myself. That, that we are like, I was like, oh, man, I got to play the bass. So I went to a pawn they shop and, the and bought a bass and put on record. Because well, I play by ear. And so, mm -hmm. so mainly I play, you know, percussion and drums and, keyboards and um and the bass guitar I never picked up the regular guitar but what happened when I was 14 years old and I was in my first band um this keyboard player named George Anderson he said Philip do you know you can sing I'm like oh yeah I mean I sing around the house he said no 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 no. I mean you need to come from behind those congos I joined him as a percussionist so singing has become my main thing and then I would say keyboards a second 
now <laughs> and then yeah. then uh percussions and basses that's what's happened but so now it's singing keyboards is second you know then drums and percussion is third and then basses is last so, so 